Activists are calling for President Biden to grant clemency to America's longest-held indigenous prisoner. Leonard Peltier is a Native American activist who was convicted of aiding and abetting the murder of two FBI agents after a controversial trial. He's currently serving two consecutive life imprisonment sentences. Leonard Peltier's attorney, Kevin Sharp, joins me now for more on the case to grant him clemency. Kevin, welcome. So the shooting of the FBI agents took place in 1975. You were first introduced to this case in 2019. What made you want to represent Mr. Peltier? I tell you, and it really is want to represent Mr. Peltier. I had just stepped off the federal bench. So I had been a federal district court judge and had taken an oath to support and defend the Constitution. I would stepped down from the bench in 2017, and, and someone sent me Mr. Peltier's file to take a look. I had actually been working on other uh, clemency applications, and someone asked me to take a look at the file. And what I saw so shocked me and so disturbed me that I, I called back and said, let Mr. Peltier know that I'm taking this case on pro bono. The level of misconduct was open and obvious um, and really bothered me as a as an officer of the court. I want to get into some of that, but but I also want to present uh, the counter argument from the FBI. They say, quote, arguments that Peltier did not receive a fair trial have re been repeatedly heard by the U.S. District Court, the Eighth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals and the U.S. Supreme Court. None have obviously prevailed. You're now pushing for President Biden to grant clemency. What is the basis for that? You know, one of the things they don't say is that they didn't engage in the misconduct. What they say is the courts upheld the conviction in spite of their misconduct, but it also required them to change their theory. Their theory had been that Mr. Peltier shot these agents. Once it was discovered that they hid exculpatory evidence, which is required to be uh, turned over under the case of United States versus Brady, um, once that was discovered, it showed, it was a ballistics test that showed Leonard Peltier did not shoot the agents. And so they changed their theory to one of aiding and abetting and said, well, he was there, along with about 40 other people. Yes, he was there. Um, and so the standard of review was different at that time. Now, uh, finding that kind of a, of a constitutional violation would never be upheld. There was also a juror who admitted on day two that she was prejudiced against Native Americans allowed to stay on the jury. That would never be upheld today. It's why James Reynolds, who was the U.S. attorney who took over the case, um, says, agrees that would never be upheld in a court today. If this clemency needs to be granted. And you, you do have uh, prominent supporters. Archbishop Bishop Desmond Tutu uh, was among them. Amnesty International. Right. Uh, they say uh, that they recognize the seriousness, seriousness of the crime for which Leonard Peltier was convicted and have the deepest sympathy for the relatives of Jack Kohler and Ronald Williams. But they believe that uh, the political factors, they say at the time, in the context of tense relations between AIM and the FBI may have influenced the way in which the case was prosecuted. Right. But, Mr. Sharp, what is your client's position now on whether or not he had, in fact, shot at the officers, independent of whether he was responsible for killing them? There was, there was shooting back and forth. No one knew who these uh, men were. You have to place that into context. And let me add, there was another person killed that day in addition to the two agents, a young um, Native boy who was 21 named Joe Stunks. No one ever uh, looked into who shot him. We know it was an agent, but we don't know why and under what circumstances. Nobody cared. But context matters. And that's why, in addition to the violations, the constitutional violations, which ought to make a difference, that ought to be the, the end game here. This is over. He should be released. But you have to understand the context. You have to understand the context of general government agent misconduct in the area as it relates to what was called the reign of terror um, and their backing of a private militia group that uh, there were about 60 murders in that area over a three-year period that the, the victims were all either AIM members or AIM supporters. Nobody was investigating that. And so these indigenous peoples were having to protect themselves. They went to the government asking for help. And they weren't getting it. We now know it's because the government was working with the private militia that was that was doing this. Um, so 
That's why they were there. And when two people in unmarked cars and plain clothes, one of them wearing moccasins shows up, a firefight is going to happen. Everybody knows this is a powder keg. Um, and so it's no surprise that shooting started. It was, it was the 1970s in and around Pine Ridge. And as one of the judges said in, a, in one of the court opinions, the government needs to take responsibility for their role in causing this firefight. So and it is, I agree, it is a tragedy that three people were killed that day. Mr. Sharp, I understand that your client recently tested positive for COVID. What is, the, how's he doing, first of all, and then what are the next steps if clemency is not granted by President Biden? Well, he has tested positive for COVID. It was one of our, our greatest fears, um, having someone of his age and his multiple comorbidities and multiple health issues inside uh, a Bureau of Prisons facility. Um, it was kind of a disaster waiting to happen, and it did. So he tested positive on Friday. It's difficult to get information out of the Bureau of Prisons. I know that he is in medical unit quarantine and under observations. Um, and other than that, I, I can't tell you much else about how he's doing. Our push right now is to get clemency from President Biden. This is really Leonard's last hope um, because of his age, because of his health problems. Um, clemency is, is it. It's just a you know, time served sentence reduction. It's what he um, deserves. It's really uh, the next step in trying to heal um, the, uh, the relationship with the federal government and the Native American community. Context matters, and it's hard to understand what happened on Pine Ridge in 75 without understanding Wounded Knee in 73 and Wounded Knee in 1890s. And all of the, the misconduct and, and broken treaties that happened before that, um, that's what led to this conflict and the, and the FBI's involvement in picking a side in a, in a local um, tribal dispute. It led to this conflict and of course it happens and it's, it's the president's sole power at this point to fix that. All right. A lot of times you'll hear executives say, whether it's a governor or the president, I don't want to interfere with the, with the uh, criminal justice system. Well, they are the criminal justice system. They're the last best hope to fix uh, a constitutional problem that can no longer be fixed. Kevin Sharp, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for letting me talk about this.